What's up everyone? This is going to be my um, explanation for problem t division 2b of code forces around 728, which is pleasant pairs. So, um, essentially what you're given is, you're given an array of distinct integers. Now, keep in mind that distinct is bolded, which means that it's an important condition to keep track of. Because it w if it wasn't important, why would they bold it, you know? It's just about reading the problem statement c carefully. So that's the first thing you want to notice about this array. And the second thing you want to notice about this array is that the values are never too large, in the sense that um, 1 is less than or equal to ai, which is less than or equal to 2 times n. And 2 times n is at most 2 times 10 to the 5, because n is at most 10 to the 5. Or I guess, yeah, n is at most 10 to the 5. And so what this means is that um, it might be helpful to, instead of um, keeping track of, like, the array as in, like, this um, a at i is equal to, like, some number, it might be better to think of it like this. Keep in mind that all we're doing is we're counting a number of distinct pairs, such that a i times a j is equal to i plus j, where i is strictly less than j. So... Let's assume, for example, that we sorted this initial array. So obviously, if AI was strictly if AI was less than AJ, if we sorted it, then if we sort it, then this pair doesn't really change because I is still less than J. So that doesn't really change at all. But if um, AI was strictly greater than AJ, then all we then what we would essentially be counting is we would be considering the pair such that. Um, it's j plus i, and then j is less than i. And this is essentially the same thing. All you're doing is that you're just switching the variables. So by this observation, you can realize that the order of the array elements don't matter at all. So what we can do instead is we can um, create like a Boolean array. So this Boolean array will be of size 2 to the n. So I'll just say like Boolean, I'll just say like... Uh, I'll call it b, and its size is 2 times n. And you essentially want to mark um, an index as true if there exists an i, if that number exists in this array, uh, in this array a. So for all i, you essentially want to set this as a true. And the reason why we can do this is because, well, one, because the values are, are never too big, and two, all elements are guaranteed to be distinct. So we don't have to keep track of any multiplicity of numbers because every number will either appear zero times or one time. It's true or false. So after we do this, um, we want to use something called a sieve. Now you might not... Now basically what this does is... I'll spell it out here first in case if you don't know what I'm talking about. I believe it's called like sieve of... I forget. If you're familiar with this, Eris... I don't know how to spell it, like, whatever. Like, if you Google this, like, it'll probably show up. If I misspelled it, and Google has autocorrect, so it doesn't really matter. But basically, you want to use this idea to process how many pairs exist. So why is this helpful? Well, um, you see the n-squared naive algorithm doesn't account for, doesn't really account for the properties of this equation over here. Why do I keep on writing g? That doesn't make any sense. So ai times aj is equal to i plus j. So one thing you want to notice is that this over this over here will represent like some sort of number that has at least two divisors. Or I guess not necessarily two divisors because one of these could equal to one, but you can represent it as a product of two numbers that exist in the subarray. So what we can do is we can iterate over the smaller um, value of ai or I guess iterate over one of these like terms. So let's say we wanted to iterate over AI. So for example, we wanted to check um, all values such that one is less than or equal to AI less than or equal to two times N. And we wanted to count how many um, values of J exist such that, um, that such that it can like form a valid pair like this. So. Here's the important thing. We can represent, rather than looping over these aj values, we can loop over this entire product over here. 
So for every like um, AI that we consider, we loop over all numbers that have AI as a divisor. So for example, we can first check AI itself, and then we can check two times AI, and then we can check three times AI, and so on, all the way until we get to um, k ai, where k is the largest number, such that this is still less than or equal to 2 times 10 to the 5. So why is this important? Well, the reason why is because of the sieve that I mentioned earlier. If you loop through these divisors, then you can basically check to see whether aj exists in this array or not. And if it is, you could, all you have to do is to check to see whether i plus j is equal to the same value as this product. Because aj is simply equal to um, this product that you're iterating over, so like if I say this is a product, then this is just a product over a at i. And so because you're iterating over all um, numbers that have a divisor of a i from 1 to 2 times n, this is well known that this doesn't have a complexity of um, 2 times n squared, but rather it has a complexity of 2n times log of log of 2n. Um, there's like a proof for this. I'm not going to go into the proof for that because it's way beyond the scope of this problem, but if you're interested in it, then you can definitely just Google like sieve of prime numbers and I'm sure something will pop up. So yeah, this is problem B of coforces around 728. Now, I'm not sure how well I explain this problem because honestly, it's kind of the type of problem where if you know this concept, it's pretty easy to solve, but if you're not super familiar with a sieve, then it could be hard to wrap your head around. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. And yeah, see you next time.